Did Intel straight up code their fix wrong? Because on the left side, we are running one of Intel's problematic BIOSes, which you're definitely running too, if you haven't updated recently. And on the right hand side, we have their 0x129 microcode applied, designed to reduce the number of CPUs self imploding through excess voltages. Is that self imploding or is that more of a death tickle? Either way, in terms of performance and gameplay, if anything, that looks like an increase to performance. But when we dive deeper into what's happening under the hood, I have some major concerns about increased voltages, the thing that this was meant to fix not make worse. So we have some big questions to answer. Should you apply Intel's fix to try and save your CPU? Are there negative impacts? And did Intel knowingly do the opposite of what they should have, like Tech yes City suspects? We're gonna keep giving you those advertised speeds, but we're gonna do so in a manner that's just increasing the power consumption, increasing the voltage over time, knowing very well that the CPUs will start to throttle. Trust me when I tell you it is pretty complicated and you'll see why. Like those baseline results being the worst voltage in shadow benchmark. That probably shouldn't be the case. But the problem very quickly is that likely the majority of the last two generations of Intel CPUs are suffering with record high failure rates. And this new microcode and BIOS that we're testing today is meant to fix it by addressing elevated voltages to the CPU, suspected to play a major role in widespread instability, with many Intel users experiencing blue screens and crashing like this. So I have 10 different scenarios to show you to see if Intel's statements on this are accurate, looking into performance difference, temperatures, and see if Intel have tamed the voltages as they should have. And depending on how we handle this together, for which I have some very strong suggestions, this entire situation is either going to be one of the best things to happen to us or one of the worst by setting another precedent for normalizing, selling you something and then taking it away from you. Let me explain. Are you tired of overpaying for your favorite games and essential software? Then you need to check out whokeys.com. In fact, let me show you the benefits and how you could save. There's over a hundred games for you to browse for cheap. You can save every month on your office subscription, even fixing the Windows watermark, ruining your game capture and limiting your Windows customization. So let's get a Windows key. I especially like that you can use PayPal for easy, secure checkout and using coupon code TL25 gets you 25% off these are already low prices. All you need to do is paste your key to become fully activated. And TechLens subscribers like the fast key delivery and peace of mind that I use the service personally. So what are you waiting for? Start saving money and visit the Hookie sponsor link below. Luna, hey, you're cute. Okay, let's quickly cover what games I chose to run and why I chose to run them specifically because it's actually a little bit important. And we'll also cover some of the data from our pre-microcode BIOS before we apply Intel's fix and compare the two, see how things change. So first up, we have Cyberpunk, which is a pretty CPU intensive game. And this is because there's a lot of things happening in the game, which is calculated by the CPU. It's also one of the two games that we're testing that Intel also tested, where they saw performance within run-to-run -run variation. So between the old and the new BIOS, these should have negligible difference. The next game I chose is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And the reason why I chose this one is because it gives some pretty interesting statistics of your CPU at the end of each benchmark run. So it will give us something extra to compare. And the final game that I chose was The Last of Us, which I chose for this reason. What the fuck is that? That is my UPS triggering its inbuilt protection because building shaders in this game had the total system power draw so much higher than I have ever seen it. Is that gonna, okay, that backed off. That was pretty insane. Honestly, I truly chose this game at the beginning because if you have a look online, it's one of the more common instances that people are having issues with. And after seeing that, I understand, it's drawing a lot of power. In fact, The Last of Us caused our CPU to request the highest voltage out of any of our pre-microcode fix tests, which if you're not 100% sure what this data means, you are probably not alone. That's completely understandable. As per the developer of Hardware Info, VID is what the CPU core is actually requesting and different to vCore which is the voltage being delivered. But looking at these numbers probably gives you more questions than answers. Like, is this a safe voltage for these chips? And regardless of that, 
how do you know if your CPU is being degraded beyond repair, especially if you're already crashing and blue screening? And you're probably not able to find a good answer to either of these questions. So here we go. Firstly, we just don't get given solid information on voltages, and that's been the case for longer than I can remember. It's rough estimates, word of mouth, and something you will not find on the product page. In fact, an Intel customer support technician summed it up pretty well, and then said something truly scary. Intel processors are individually calibrated at the factory to operate on a specific voltage frequency and operating condition curve specified for the individual processor. What this sentence basically means is that all CPUs are coded with different values that are necessary to keep up the voltage and frequency given what it's trying to do. So your voltage may be lower than mine, it may be higher than mine, if we're both trying to sustain, say, five and a half gigahertz. Please be informed that the maximum voltage range for processor operation mode is 1.72 volts that is scary high no don't do that because a lot of people are going to read that as it is safe to be operating at that voltage range for a prolonged period of time i know it doesn't say that but if you're looking up saying why is my cpu hitting 1.7 volts then you read this and you're like okay i guess i'm within spec you're not so given that the voltage frequency curve is coded for each cpu differently you won't get one answer for everyone. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be given a defined range from these manufacturers. As the Intel employee stated, it's something they obviously check for each CPU when they code those values. It's part of their QA process. All they would need to do is just tell us what the high and the low point of the range is. And I cannot express enough that this should absolutely be one of the things that comes out of this mess. Definitive information regarding the power of all CPUs. But we'll probably have to push for this collectively as a community if we want that to happen. Because if we don't push for this, what other positive thing is going to come from this mess? Because I tell you this now, Intel's fix has some explaining to do. But what are we expecting to see from this fix? Well, obviously a reduction in voltage, given that Intel specifically state that they are addressing elevated voltages. And it makes sense that there might be a performance reduction as well, as they tend to go hand in hand. Well, for me, it started out with seriously more crashing than I had ever experienced before. Check this out. A quick BIOS update later, and we now have these performance profiles for the CPU. Given that they relate to this crazy table from Intel, my default should be extreme with the 13900K. My start on extreme was seriously broken, finding that none of the games that I had previously tested were able to launch, and trying to open Cyberpunk caused the whole system to lock up and hard restart. At that point, I was just thinking, what the hell is wrong with this fix? And was pretty concerned that this was the end of the line for that poor CPU. But fortunately, the Cyberpunk forced restart did help for some reason, and everything worked fine after that. If you can count this, that's fine. Because given that Intel states they're trying to address elevated voltages, I find it really interesting that voltage has largely increased for me, not decreased. And the least performant power profile has the highest voltage out of all of them, which doesn't seem great. I feel like Intel's concern about excess voltage damaging CPUs shouldn't have been met with increasing the voltage and could be an indication of something else they're trying to fix, maybe something to do with instability. So before we discuss that, let's have a look and see if this new fix from Intel causes a performance hit, because taking performance away is going to be extremely difficult to justify. Well, out of our three games, two of which were tested by Intel and found to have a negligible impact when applying their fix. We tested them and actually saw an increase to performance by about five to 10% in Cyberpunk and The Last of Us, which also benefited from a healthy boost to the 1% lows. This is across all power profiles, even the baseline and our Shadow of the Tomb Raider metrics show a negligible decrease to performance, especially in the performance profile. That's almost bang on, which is good news, I guess. I mean, is it good news? Given that we are nearly always drawing more power, but given that I was expecting performance to go down before applying this, like we saw in our previous video, it's kind of nice to see. Which brings me on to the stranger productivity results. Puget Bench for Premiere Pro, the test that I was most interested in, really didn't seem to care, with roughly a 1% difference between all of our tests. 
and this was the same for both Cinebench R23 and R24 single core. That's a negligible difference there. But things started to look more interesting when we cover multi-core Cinebench, both experiencing a much bigger hit in the extreme profile while recovering the score in the performance profile, which makes sense, especially when we look at clock speed. The performance profile spent significantly more time above five gigahertz and looks much more similar to our pre-microcode test. So between my last video and this one, it looks like Intel wasn't being 100% truthful here and heavily multi-threaded performance can have a significant impact depending on the profile you choose. And the more you think about these results in the context of instability and crashing, the more it makes sense, but I don't think you're gonna like the answer. So we've seen Intel's fix to address elevated voltages, increase voltage in my setup, which sounds very counterintuitive, but the only performance drop that we saw is with extremely highly threaded tasks, like all cores locked to 100% highly threaded, which although uncommon, even when rendering videos, is something that you paid for and you are getting a worse experience because of this update. Speaking of, we should probably talk about instability and thermals, because what good is the fix if it's thermal throttling or causing your CPU to crash even more? So I have an example that I want to show you, something to help demonstrate what I think we've seen so far. So here we have Heaven Benchmark running on this 4070 Ti, and it's running as it should. Everything looks good, but what if we want to increase the performance? Let's see what happens. So what we're going to do is apply a 240 megahertz overclock and hit enter. The game is completely unresponsive and any second now, oh, okay, even if not crashing, that is definitely not what's meant to happen. There we go. That game just completely crashed. And although this is obviously a GPU that we're testing and not a CPU, they are fundamentally microprocessors and they require the same things to function properly. That crash that you just saw was the result of the hardware trying to do too much with too little voltage, causing an error. But there is a fix for that. In fact, we fixed the crashing by increasing the voltage, which should tell you everything you need to know about the results that we were seeing from Intel's fix. Because to me, it looks like they are increasing the voltage to mitigate the amount of crashing and blue screening that users have been dealing with, but it comes at a cost. Number one, if these chips are truly degrading, whether from excess voltage or oxidization, as you might have seen, pushing more voltage through them is not going to make the problem better. It's going to make it worse over time. And two, electricity transfers to heat extremely effectively. So now you have a whole new issue to deal with, something that might change the relevancy of these tests. During our testing, we consistently saw higher temperatures with the new fix, and you probably will too. The thing that makes this fundamentally concerning is that we're using a dual 360 millimeter custom loop at a static fan speed, whereas the average user will probably have something like a closed loop cooler, already hitting the limitations of their cooling capacity. And as modern CPU performance is tightly linked to thermals, the closer you get to that thermal limit, the thermal limit of these chips, the more performance will be pulled back to compensate for that heat. So although I saw a performance increase in a few tests, there is no guarantee that temperature won't be your limitation, decreasing your performance. So please keep an eye out on that. Which means we now have all of the information that we need to answer the question, should you apply this fix? And will it save your CPU if you're already experiencing issues like I was? Honestly, the best thing to probably do is spend time optimizing through the BIOS to something that you're happy with. This can be used to reduce the voltage regardless of what microcode and BIOS you have. But I appreciate that not everybody has the passion, the time or the patience for that. So in terms of Intel's fix, the best power profile for me wasn't the recommended setting from Intel, which is extreme. The performance profile offered the best and most consistent results while also not increasing the voltage but you should realistically do some basic tests yourself as your motherboard and cooling configuration could change this outcome. But there might be some good news for people crashing now, because as much as I think Intel is in the wrong here in several different ways, we do need to be fair. And it may be way too easy to assume that the instability is the fault of the CPU, because I think that happened to me and I think I was wrong. I was pretty convinced in the last video 
that my processor was having issues, given what I saw online and also my first-hand experience. I think that's a pretty fair assumption. But one thing I didn't mention yet is that all of the tests that you've seen today were run on a completely fresh install of Windows, even the older BIOS. And other than the initial issues that I had with the fix, stability really hasn't been a problem for me, which I am extremely thankful for. This realistically is a best case scenario for anyone facing issues right now and is worried about their hardware because instability can be caused by so many things. Then add in the fact that many applications misreport the fault, it then makes it even more challenging to track down the issue. And with so many of these news reports coming out, you kind of have an easy thing to point to that may not be it. So the first thing that I would do is eliminate any software issues. And you can thank Hookies for the Windows key discounts below. Because the alternative is if the CPU is at fault, it's very likely to be terminal. And Intel really aren't handling warranties as well as I would hope. But with all of that aside, how do we make a positive change here? There's been a lot of justified negativity around this, but how can we turn this into something positive? Like definitive voltage information per SKU, or if performance falls below a certain value with adequate cooling, it's proved to be defective and should be returned. We have had very little consumer protections for CPUs, and I want that to change. So let me know, I am truly interested. Otherwise, you should check out how my last system broke by following millions of other users and acting upon the worst computer advice on YouTube. And you can check that out by clicking here. Otherwise, guys, share, like, subscribe, they are always appreciated, and I hope you have an amazing day.